Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wesley, and welcome to the second Sunday worship in Advent. Today, we will continue our Advent journey from almost to Christmas to all together Christmas. And please open your hearts to God's guidance on this special journey and seek spiritual transformation through your prayers and music and the word of God today. Let's take a moment to welcome each other to this place of worship by saying, God loves you, and so do I. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Before we start, please find a red sign-up book in your pew and let us know you are here with us to worship. Also, if you are visiting Wesley for the first time, please take a visitor's card and fill it out and put it in the offering plate. Then I will reach out to you throughout the week. Let us share this week's announcement. The youth group will celebrate Christmas together at my house on Friday, December 15th from 6 to 10 p.m. If you plan to attend, please prepare a gift under $10 for a Christmas gift exchange. You are also welcome to invite a friend. To sign up, parents, please go to our Facebook page and find the Sign Up Genius link. If you took one or more angel ornaments from the Christmas tree in the narthex, please drop off the Christmas gift by Sunday, December 17th. Thank all the particip participants for supporting this special mission project. Please join us for our second worship night on Sunday, December 17th at 7 p.m. This contemporary worship will feature uplifting music and YK will lead us. Invite your family and friends to kick off our Christmas festivities and fellowship with the light refreshments will begin at 6.30 p.m. in the fellowship hall. On Christmas Eve, we will offer two different worship services at 10.30 a.m. and 11 p.m. The morning service will feature a special Christmas pageant, and the night service will include candle lighting and Holy Communion. I hope you can join us to praise and give thanks to God for the birth of Jesus Christ. And now, let us turn our attention to worship, and this time I invite pagan family to come forward to light the candle of hope. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and cause water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountain trembled before you. In the midst of our encounters with uncertainty and upheaval and our longing for deliverance, Jesus calls to us, Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. We light this candle as a sign of our hope. May we stay awake to God's activity in the world as we wait in expectation that even now God is with us, working to restore us to the fullness of life with God and one another. Amen.
as you are able and join me in the call to worship. I will leave, uh, read the light print and you may respond with the bold print. We gather again at the end of the year to wait for the Christ child anew. We wait in the hope of the coming of Messiah. We wait and we remember the astounding things God has done to save, his pe to save God's people. We wait in the hope of the coming of Messiah. We wait and we pay attention for signs of God's justice and mercy turning the world upside down. We wait in the hope of the coming of Messiah. We wait, and in our waiting, we lear learn to live as people of God's promise. Let us worship in the hope of Jesus Christ, the coming Messiah. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able and sing our opening hymn, number 196. unusual place no one would have ever expected, a feeding trough for animals. God shows us that no place on earth is beyond his reach, beyond hope. As you prepare your morning offerings, remember the, that hope that God can give to every man through the work that we do in our communities. We have three ways that you can give. There are offering plates at the front and the back of the uh, sanctuary if you are here and want to give in person. You can give through the Tithely app, or you can mail an offering to WUMC at 1500 Plainfield Avenue, South Plainfield, New Jersey.
provision and also your promise of the gift of your son Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to, to the needs of the people around us. Grant us the courage to respond wherever hope is needed. Bless the gifts that we present to you today that they may be multiplied to bring hope in places where hope seems to be lacking. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the makers of heaven and earth. Almighty God, we thank you. Thank you for your constant love and for the blessings of this day. We know that even when we cannot see or feel you, still you are there. Help us to remember you and to listen for your voice in the words of families, friends, and strangers. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you reveal yourself in the world and in our lives. God of comfort, we pray for ourselves and those who come to you this Christmas season tired, in turmoil, and in pain. In this time, we ask your healing blessings upon all that we carry in our hearts. Sorrow, we fear, may never end. Wounds, we cannot even put into words. God of mercy and compassion, there are those among us who are grieving over what might have been. Death or loss of terrible hurt has changed our experience of Christmas. We remember that once it was a special day for us too, but someone or something precious has gone away from us in this life. We have lost a loved one, a job, a goal, a cause, a dream. We are weary from the journey and seek rest, peace, and shelter from the storm. God of grace, in the spirit of the season, grant us all that we need to comfort us. We ask that you sustain all those of us, both here and throughout the world, who wander or want or weep or are heavy laden, that we may be lifted up in courage and journey on this peace. God of love, in this season, we embrace and offer up to you all that used to be, which is now lost to us and cannot be again. With the celebration all around, up, around us, memories of what was and fears of what may be weighed heavy on our hearts. Please hold us close in your embrace, be near to us until joy comes into our hearts. Keep watch your children, dear Lord. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 5. You can follow along in your pew Bibles. I'm sorry, I don't see people. In page number 218 of the New Testament. A living hope. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. The word of God for the people of God. Please join me in a prayer. Lord of hope, thank you. Thank you for letting us continue this journey through the Advent season. Open our hearts and minds to the message you have for us and give us the strength and courage to follow through on the ways you inspire us through today's message. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our eternal hope. Amen. Once, Martin Luther said, Everything that is done in the world is done by hope. This is so true for us humans. We are driven by hope. Unlike animals, just surviving is not really enough for us. We need to believe that things will get better. This hope pushes humanity forward, changing our history, starting new civilizations, and discovering new knowledge that improves our lives. We always look forward to a better life, and this hopeful attitude is very important for all of us. We dream of living, living in bigger or more comfortable homes, achieving financial stability, and advancing in our jobs. We want to be healthy, spend more time with our families, and see our children succeed. Again, having positive and wishful thoughts can be beneficial for all of us. However, the challenge arises when hope is baffled or scattered. The things we hope for and expect do not always materialize. And when our hopes are dashed, we become disappointed, fearful, and worried. In this moment, whether we have enough strength and wisdom to handle the bitterness that comes our way is a matter for reflection. And because of this, placing our hope and trust solely in our government, economy, education, achievement, and humanity cannot represent the all-together hope God intends for us. In this season of Advent, God invites us to fully embrace the hope shown in the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the Bible, the Hebrew words yahar or kava means to wait, for they are symbols of hope. So if biblical hope is about waiting for something, what are we waiting for? What should we wait for? Throughout Israel's history, the people always waited for a savior. Enslaved by Egypt and later by Assyria, Babylon, Persia, and colonized by Rome, they longed for someone to rescue and liberate them. The hope described in the Bible is about waiting for this savior. However, the savior the people of Israel anticipated was totally different from the one God had prepared. For them, the savior should have a military and political power to defeat their enemies. Yet, the savior got sent countered the oppression of powerful nations with nonviolent pacifism, teaching forgiveness and even love for enemies. While they expected the Savior who could set them free from heavy taxes and unfair governmental system, the Savior got sent just to wipe their tears and held their hands and prayed with them. 
Jesus arrived as the savior of the Israelites, yet their challenging lives remained unchanged. Consequently, many failed to recognize or rejoice in his coming and were unable to find hope in his ministry and in his life. This raises the question, was Jesus a failed savior? Was Jesus a failed savior? Absolutely not. Jesus was not the Messiah intended to save them from their societal, economic, and political hardships. Instead, he came to rescue them from a spiritual crisis, a situation where their earthly troubles prevented them from seeking or focusing on God. For Jesus, the larger issue was not their day-to-day -day suffering, but rather their entanglement in hatred and despair and their life of constant worry about the future. God's purpose in sending Jesus was to show God's love in a tangible way to those who could not feel God's presence in their lives. Jesus' mission was to provide a spiritual anchor not to solve immediate problems, but to free them from the emotional, mental, and spiritual darkness that their problematic lives caused. And Jesus' mission was to empower them to walk their life's journey with faith and courage. So during this Advent season, how can we once again welcome Jesus Christ, our Savior, into our lives and find the ultimate hope in Him? How? How can we do this? Today, I seek the answer in the event described in the Book of Numbers, chapter 21. As we know, God led the people of Israel out of 430 years of suffering under Egyptian oppression, guided by Moses. However, the Israelites failed to see how their exodus would eventually bless them. While enslaved in Egypt, undergoing harsh labor and unjustly stripped of their possessions, they prayed very hard day and night to be freed. Yet, when God answered their prayers and turned their pain into freedom, they began to hope for something else. In the wilderness, they hoped for more abundant food, enough water to drink, and a more settled place to live in. When these hopes were dashed, they blamed God and their leader, Moses. They rejected the manna and coils provided by God's grace, complaining why they were led out of Egypt, where they could eat and drink enough to suffer anew in the wilderness. In response, God sent fiery serpent among the people, resulting in many deaths. The Israelites then reflected on their actions, confessing their sin of speaking against God. Then Moses prayed for God's mercy on the people once again. What do you think happened? What would God do with the Israelites who repeatedly betrayed and blamed God, especially when their lives did not go as they wished? God forgave them. God forgave them again and opened a path of grace for healing and restoration. God commanded Moses to make a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. God said, whoever looks at it would live. And indeed, all who looked at the bronze serpent in faith received a new life. In John chapter 3, Jesus used this story to explain God's plan of salvation to Nicodemus who came to learn who Jesus was late at night. Jesus then sp spoke the essence of the gospel, as we know well in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus stated that just as those who looked at the bronze serpent on a pole in the wilderness received life, so too would he be lifted up, enabling people to gain life through him. Jesus was predicting his death on the cross, 
an event that would pave the way for life for everybody. The bronze serpent in the wilderness and the cross of Jesus Christ represent the pinnacle of God's grace. God did not make it hard for all of us to receive a new life. God didn't set impossible standards or demand long periods of spiritual discipline to be saved. Instead, God simply asked us to look at the cross and have a faith in it. Looking at the cross, similar to looking at the bronze serpent, it's a straightforward task. Think about it. Young children who cannot read, they can look at it. The elderly, even, though, even those, those without strength, can look at the cross. Those who are overwhelmed with their busy lives can still find a moment to look at the cross. People who are sick, poor, and struggling can look at the cross. Anyone can look to the cross and believe that Jesus has the power to save us. This is the essence of gospel, and it represents God's grace given us as a gift. In this Advent season, God calls us to embrace the true, true meaning of hope, which lies in awaiting our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yet, if we are waiting is focused only on ourselves, it remains incomplete, merely a fragment of what it could be. To fully realize this whole, we should encourage others to also wait for Jesus as their Savior and share this hope with them. It's about transforming almost hope into altogether hope. <coughs> Reflecting on my own journey, I recall the many individuals who guided me back to Jesus amidst life's challenges. During my childhood, my family faced the trauma of our house burning down, not once but multiple times due to the use of flammable glue in bag manufacturing in my father's factory. These incidents forced my family to constantly relocate leaving us with a sense of unending insecurity and confusion. My college years brought a different kind of pain when I lost my best friend to suicide. Her battle with depression ended tragically, leaving me in a state of shock and guilt, unable to eat or sleep for over a month, haunted by our last moments together. Moreover, as I've shared in previous sermons, there was a period when my husband Kenny endured the long-term unemployment. We struggled daily to provide for our three children, wrestling with not just the financial strain, but also the emotional toll it took on us. In those dark times, hope seemed far, yet there were people who upheld me in prayer, offered practical support, and constantly redirect my focus to Jesus, my Savior, rather than the overwhelming situations. We all encounter various degrees of despair in our life, for believing in Jesus doesn't shield us from these sufferings. Yet, it in these moments of darkness that Jesus, our Savior, can rescue us. We, he liberates us from the bitterness that hinders our progress, shame, guilt, resentment, disappointment, and fills our lives with his illuminating light. In the midst of despair, God doesn't want us to be consumed by our problems. Instead, he urges us to fix our eyes on Jesus, our steadfast anchor. He wants us to discover Jesus Christ, the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, who can lead us out of darkness. Are you in deep despair? Or are you searching for hope? Turn to Jesus. Look at the cross. 
to get across again and have a faith in His salvific power that could transform your lives and also share His beacon of hope with the others. My friends, in Jesus, new creation can happen. In Jesus, healing can take place. In Jesus, lives can be transformed. And this is the all together hope we anticipate together. Amen. If you are fearful and if you find yourself in despair, it is time. It is time to look at the cross again and go back to your Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the cross, you will find a new way of living 
and you will find living hope. Therefore, go into the world with confidence and courage. Your mighty Savior goes with you. Don't be afraid. On your journey, may the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit keep you and bless you now and forever. Amen.